Hello guys, um, as always, it's Ghana from Endless English. And today, we'll be talking about nouns. Noun is actually a part of speech. So today, we'll actually discuss about uh, how you can recognize nouns, what are the different kinds of nouns, and so forth and so on. So, let's get to it. At once, what's a noun? A noun is a name of a person, place, or thing. A word that names a person, a place, or a thing is what we refer to as nouns. So, first, there are four types of nouns we'll look at here. We have uh, concrete nouns being the first. So, what's a concrete noun? What's a concrete noun? When we talk about concrete nouns, what does it refer to? So, a concrete noun is actually people or thing. That's what we call a concrete noun. The people or thing that exist physically. That can be, you can actually see, you can actually see, hear, touch, smell. So, if a word or something has all these qualities or has one of these qualities, it's actually a concrete noun. So, something that can be seen, touch, uh, smell, you can actually taste. If you can taste something, then that's actually a uh, concrete noun. So, we have examples. It's a dog. A dog is something you can touch, an animal you can touch. We have a building, you know, a, a large building. You can actually feel, you can actually touch that building. You can actually see the building. We have clothes. All of us do wear clothes. So, uh, you, can actually, you can actually see this is a cloth that I'm wearing. This is a t-shirt. I can actually touch it. And we have trees. So, a tree too is uh, one of uh, concrete nouns. So, concrete nouns are actually uh, people or things. I beg your pardon. People or things that exist physically. Can be seen, can be touched, can be smelled. All those are concrete nouns. So, we've given examples there. So, the next... Uh, type of nouns we are talking about that we'll be talking about is abstract nouns what are abstract nouns this uh, nouns this kind of nouns actually refer to ideas qualities and of course conditions ideas qualities and condition when words refer to ideas when words refer to qualities when words refer to condition these words are what we quantify or we put under we qualify what we qualify as abstract nouns. I beg your pardon. What we qualify as abstract nouns are words that refer to ideas, qualities, and conditions. So this cannot be seen or touched. You cannot actually touch them or see. Understand? These are abstract nouns. So we have examples. You have truth. You know, truth saying something true. Is a state of being uh, truthful. Truth, something that is a fact. That's what we call truth. That's an abstract noun because you cannot touch truth. You cannot you you cannot see more truth or you cannot see truth. It's just a fact about something. We have danger. Something being dangerous. Danger. That that state of being harmful. It's an abstract noun because we don't we, we don't know we don't we cannot we cannot see we cannot touch danger we just know it's 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 something dangerous the next is happiness a state of being happy so why this is an abstract noun is because you touch or see you cannot touch or see happiness happiness is actually something you feel within that you are happy so truth, danger, happiness, friendship, a state of being friendly, is what we consider as abstract nouns. Cannot be seen, cannot be touched. They refer to ideas, conditions, qualities, state. So that's what we call abstract nouns. So the next type of noun we'll be looking at at the end is what we call collective nouns. What are collective nouns? When you hear the name, the, the word collective, it means to put in a group, collect, to group. So collective nouns are actually people or thing that are in groups, have groups of people or thing. 
that's what we call collective nouns. Example, you have examples here, a family is a collective noun because you have a group of people, father, mother, children, aunties, and so on. That's a, a collective noun. Then we have a government. A government. A government is also a collective noun because you have, I don't know, a president or a prime minister and you have several other ministers, several other secretary of state, several other uh, people within a government. So a government is a group of people leading a country or an organization. So being a group is what qualifies this word government to be a collective noun. The next we'll talk about is a team. The next example is a team or a jury. A team, you know, we have many basketball te uh, teams. We have many uh, football teams around the world. Chelsea, Manchester United, and so on. Those are teams. Understand? Those are teams made up of a group of people. Maybe Chelsea 11 team, Manchester a, um, 11 man team, Manchester 11 man team facing each other. That's what you call a, a team, a group of people. I have a jury. A jury is a group of judges. Maybe presiding over a case, a matter, or an incident. You have a, a, a group of three, four, five, six uh, judges. That's what we call jury. To give a final conclusion, a final verdict is what we call a jury. So, family, government, team, jury, these are all collective nouns because they are, they are a group of people that constitute a, this word constitute a group of people. Then the last type of uh, nouns we'll look at here is a countable or what we call mass nouns. Actually, it's a countable or uncountable nouns countable and uncountable now so countable from the word countable means these are actually nouns that can be counted things that can be counted understand these are actually things that can be counted countable from the word countable and then mass nouns are typically though sometimes there are exceptions but typically uncountable typically cannot be counted can't be counted so, we'll look at examples of countable nouns. You have, and to tell you something, countable nouns always have a singular presided by a or an, and then have a plural. So, for a countable noun, you always have a singular version and a plural version. So, for mass nouns or uncountable nouns, they don't have a singular version or a plural version they are just nouns i don't know whether you get my point mass nouns are not singular per plural though there are exceptions or exceptional cases when they can be pluralized i beg your pardon so for countable nouns things that can be counted mass nouns things that cannot be counted so for example, we have a, a cat and the plural of cat, cat. This is a countable noun. You have a woman and you have women. You can also have a man and you have a man. You have country for countable because you can count that many countries in Africa. So we have country as a singular version of uh, a countable noun. And then the plural version is countries countries so countable nouns always have a singular and plural version why countable nouns cannot be counted you cannot actually count them so they don't have a singular version so for count uh, for mass nouns or uncountable nouns which cannot be counted examples are you have rice flour wine rain, wood, all these are uncountable. You cannot count them. So you have many abstract nouns that also fall under uncountable nouns because you cannot count happiness. You cannot quantify happiness. You cannot say I have two happiness, three happiness. It's very wrong. That's bad English. 
you cannot say there are two or three dangers there. So because you cannot quantify happiness, danger, truth, uh, friendship, humor, which are all abstract nouns, then most of them will fall under uncountable nouns. So remember, this is the first step of part of speech that we are learning, going through nouns and seeing the various types of nouns, concrete nouns, abstract nouns, collective nouns, countable and uncountable, all countable and mass nouns. So with this, I feel we've covered nouns to its ent entirety and that you can go ahead to start using nouns and actually figuring out what kind of noun is this or which kind of noun does this word fall in. So I would like to hear your comments in the comment section below. Like how, how we can improve our lessons, I beg your pardon, how we can improve our lesson, how we can uh, get to prepare a lesson for your questions or what you feel can be done to improve this channel. So with this, um, I feel we've come to the end of this lesson and I want to thank you all for watching. It's been a pleasure being your teacher. It's Ghana from Endless English and if you are new to this channel, if you found this uh, lesson important, please don't forget to like, uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell for all updates regarding this channel. This is how it's done and this is the way it is supposed to be done. Until next time, from me and my team, it's a goodbye for now.